What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam. Happy Halloween. We're gonna do a repot. I haven't been here in over a month. Sorry. What we've got here in front of us today are some plants that are, are gonna die if I don't do something about it. So I figured um, if I needed to start this process. It's um, well into fall where I am. I'm in Massachusetts in the United States and my plants are starting to, you know, get the brown leaf thing, the little sad thing. Uh, it's a combination of my plant parenting style, which um, I have previously referred to as neglect. Since they are suffering some consequences of that parenting style, um, I thought that we could uh, do a little Halloween theme here and resurrect some of these dying plants. I, I am going to feel some shame in this video and I will appreciate it if you will not exacerbate that with your comments. Okay? Okay, so um, the other thing that I keep putting off is actually purchasing some new pots. So as a result of that, I am a little low on things to put my plants in. So we're going to do a little swap with these two plants right here. This, this lovely ceramic planter here used to be overflowing with my uh, lemon lime maranta because I didn't water things. It was in the spring when the garden outside was really like needing all of my attention. Um, unfortunately, that resulted in me not watering this plant and a lot of it died back. And then what was left, the thrips got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this oversized burl marks. Uh, this is Carl. It, Carl used to be variegated. A uh, fun little thing. I didn't know about this until it was, uh, could you focus? I, geez, thank you. God. So anyway, this, this guy used to be um, a variegated plant and I didn't realize that it was an unstable. I just didn't really look it up. I kind of, I kind of panic purchased um, when I was doing my first import order. This was from my first Equigenera import, I believe. Um, so this is how it's doing. Give you a little close up of what's going on in here. It's just, there's a lot of chaos. There's, there's a lot going on in here. So I figured this pot being a little wider, you know, it can sort of support itself a little better until I can get in here and really take some propagations because of course I want to make a video out of that. Um, so I haven't done it yet and we're not doing it now because so I have to get ready for Halloween party after this. So anyway, tell me what you're being for Halloween if you dress up and celebrate. Okay. Oh, snap. I can just squeeze that too hard. I'm, I'm sorry, Carl. So I'm just sort of um, knocking this out into a paper bag that I will take out to the compost pile. Carl, you're you're pretty stuck, man. Okay. So. Boy, I guess I should have repotted Carl maybe before. Those are my uh, fun plant tweezers that make me feel like a scientist. I'm actually just gonna see if I can unstick Carl from the walls of his prison. This, this mother tucking plant is not coming out, let me tell you. <laughs> so if this happens, just stick like a butter knife or something down the side and Kind of push in and lift. Just be careful because you could like tear the plant right out of the root ball if it's holding on there enough. Okay, that did it. Oh, oh my god. I'm so embarrassed right now. You were gonna see this. Sorry, Carl. Um. Oops. Well, great root girls. <laughs> it's like no soil left. It's, it's just a root. So uh, this reminds me that of a question that I'm going to talk more about this in an upcoming video where I'm showing you how I prepare all of my house plants for the winter. Um, but I'll just mention it here. I get a lot of, I get the same question a lot and that is whether you can repot plants or propagate plants in the winter. And um, the short answer is yes. 
And if you, if you think about it, the only reason that people tell you that you shouldn't and you should wait until spring is because what happens in the spring, it gets warmer and the day gets longer, right? So if you want to have a similar or the same effect of propagating and repotting, less so repotting, more so propagating um, in the winter time, all you really need to do is introduce a little bit of warmth and have some artificial light. And if you have those lights on a timer, you can have them go for, you know, eight to 12 hours a day and your plants are not going to suffer that light loss quite like they would if they were just in a window. Because I have a lot of artificial light inside of my house, I don't have a lot of window space that gets like great light. Um, and my cats are a little bit greedy with the window space. So because of that, I have a lot of artificial light around my apartment and that enables me to kind of work throughout the winter on catching up on repotting and stuff like that. Now, of course, um, just to make my own life easier, I will put things off into the spring if I can. What a mess. What, what a mess I did to this plant. Um, I'm actually not even sure if this planter right here is going to be big enough for this because it is um, huge. <laughs> This plant has been treated with systemic, which I know that people cannot get in like Canada. I don't think you can get it and maybe some other countries. That's probably a good thing, you know? I have had a real hard time getting rid of the thrips previous to that. And um, so far, I do have one plant that is being I'm talking about you. Um, is not cooperating with anything I do. I mean, it's just a thrip magnet and I am this close to throwing it out, but at the very least it is gonna get isolated because I don't have it. It's frustrating because this is just not big enough. It's not big enough and I can't do that to Carl after, not after all this. All right, I'm just gonna use this bigger pot and Carl, you're gonna have to sink or swim, my guy. Um, you know what? It's not even too big. It's not even too big. I don't know what I'm drinking today. I'm not even drinking yet. Oh no, some roots fell off. Oh, sorry bud. Oh, I would say at this point, like probably 60% of my plants need to be repotted. <laughs> it's... Uh. So here's what my soil mix is looking like. Not quite as chunky as I would like it. I basically use like um, a medium chunk orchid mix and I mix it in with, you know, your happy frog, your, um, I prefer ocean forest, uh, any potting mix of your choice. And then you just kind of chunk it up with some stuff. Now, every time I talk about my substrate, um, I get quite a bunch of comments that are like, well, you should use this instead, usually with like pumice or some kind of grit or some stuff I can't get here. Um, I'm not ordering things like that in the mail. <laughs> like that's just kind of wasteful. Um, so if I can use something else that I can get at the store locally without um, sending a truck across the country and planes across the sky, um, that's probably what I'm gonna go with. So, but, um, so I do believe you, I just, Usually if I'm using it, it's because that's what I can get. <laughs> that's it. feel free to give me advice still. But if you're wondering why I don't use the substrate of your choice, that is probably why. So I got this plant, um, I ordered it right before the pandemic in 2020. Um, I did not obviously know what was happening. I think, you know what, that's a lie. I think that the pandemic was just starting and it was a, it was like before we knew that the ma you know that the mail would just be destroyed, right? So this is two years of growth, you know, um, under adverse conditions. <laughs> so I want to be careful not to bury too much and not bury any higher than where it was before. Don't mind me explaining if you're practiced at this, but um, I know that there are probably some people early in their plant journey finding this video. So when you repot, you want to keep it about the same soil level. Otherwise you risk rotting. So this guy is all packed in here. I didn't fill, you know, the soil's only up to about here. 
Carl is looking brand new. Yeah, that is much better. So I'll probably put a little stick support or something in here and I will probably just do a little bit of air rooting in here um, before I give him a snip just to be extra safe with Carl here because I've grown quite fond of him now that the thrips have finally uh, given up on him, at least for now. And I did treat this soil as well. Look at that. He could use a leaf clean. I'm also going to show you my cool little watering reservoir hack here. So I've got the five gallon bucket, right? Your regular five gallon bucket. And this was actually my partner Mike's idea. So shout out to Mike. Uh, he's been working at a grow store for quite some time. He's actually got um, a new job coming up, which is great. Um, but that's besides the point. He told me uh, he would bring me home one of these. It's like a hydroponics net pot kind of deal. And it fits right over the five gallon bucket. And then you can just put your plant in here and you can water it and it will fall through into the bucket. And um, that way you can give your plant a real good soak because um, I have too many plants to like bring them somewhere to water them. So this way um, I can do them. I water in sections just so it's not overwhelming. So. I can just kind of bring the bucket around with me. So then, you know, when it gets about to here full, you'll have to empty it. And that's like a reasonable amount to carry somewhere. It's not too heavy. Like a full five gallon bucket is too much for me to be sloshing all over my living room, so. But it works really good and I'm totally loving it. So I'm really psyched on that. Good idea, Mike. So what I'm gonna do with this Maranta is I'm just gonna take it out of here and put it into a smaller pot. Uh, same logic as, as Carl going into a bigger pot. It had a lot of roots. This is going to have less roots and it's in too big of a pot, which means, you know, watering it, it's just going to sit while this whole pot tries to evaporate with just this little tiny root ball in here, just drowning. So, um, I love this plant and I've had it for so long that I really don't want to give it up. So I'm going to try and save it by moving it. Wish me luck. Okay, so I think I'll just come in against the pot on the side here and see if we can fish out what's going on in here. Okay, so you can see there's a good amount of roots attached to it. Um, some of these are dead, so I may take some of those off. You can also see a little tuber. I think that's a little tuber right there. That's pretty cool. I've not seen one of those taking this apart yet. Yes, I am in my pajama pants, by the way, and I will remain in them until it is warm again. <laughs> oh, I got distracted talking about propagating that. So anyway, if you want to propagate in the winter, ADD, we're back on topic. Um, you just need to have a little bit of heat and extra light. So what that kind of looks like is a grow light. Um, you can have fancy grow lights, you can have non-fancy grow lights, any grow light really will help you. Put it on a timer so you don't have to think about it. And then you're gonna program it for, you know, like 10 hours a day or eight hours a day if you wanna save a little bit of electricity because this one wants to be real, we're probably gonna have to do that. You can use a heating mat, like they sell them for seedlings. So you can look up seedling heating mat and you can use that. You can put um, the plants, you know, just above it on like a cooling rack or something like that if it's if you're afraid of it being too warm because they can get a little depending on like how much money you have to spend on them. Some of the less expensive ones can have like hot spots on them and stuff. So you may want to use a cooling rack and have it just above, but that will be enough warmth to keep your propagations going. And then of course there's all kinds of tutorials online for propagation boxes and things like that will maintain heat and humidity um, by nature of the light and then the sealed environment. So you can definitely propagate in the winter. Now, if you have none of those things, can you still propagate? Totally. You just may find that you have um, less of a success rate is all. Because with the low light and um, slow soil evaporation, if you have them in water, it'll be fine. But, um, you know, sometimes a cold windowsill can, can kill your propagation. So really just to up your odds of it being successful, um, yeah, just give it a little bit more steady light and some warmth. 
Okay, so this boy, this, boy, this thing is so dehydrated. Um, I'm gonna give it a little extra water. I'll show you how the bucket works here. So I'm just putting the plant in there. And giving it a little bit of water till it comes through the bottom. Good to water after you repot something too because it settles the soil down. Gonna leave that in the pot to drip and then we will introduce you to the next unfortunate soul. Okay, so the next one's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can feel free to be mad at me. Um, so this is the Philodendron Lupinum. Uh, this came from Kaylee Ellen at the Rare Plant Shop and she sent this to me as a surprise and um, it for a very long time was just a couple of leaves and I was afraid to breathe around it. Um, I know that she was concerned that it wouldn't ship well I think. Yeah, no, I was afraid to like breathe around it and I kept it in a bag because I was convinced that the thrips would get it. I mean it was just, I would treated it like it was made of glass for quite a while and it didn't do much of anything and then all of a sudden it started growing over the spring and summer it grew like crazy and it was in a bag so of course all up here has just been mangled from being in the plastic bag and just you know drying out in the um, semi hydro that I have uh, previously mentioned I am just not doing anymore. I'm not super good at it, but it obviously was good at getting it jump started and going. These are a cool plant. This has these precious little leaves. They're so cute. So this in the in the wild is a hemi epiphytic plant, which means that um, like an epiphyte will start in the forest floor and work its way up. A hemi epiphytic plant will start in the canopy and work its way down. So that's why um, this plant actually goes from having these really adorable small leaves to these more like elongated leaves and it, it looks like a completely different plant. So it's pretty cool. I would probably never be able to get it to that point. I'm surprised I got it to this point. Uh, <laughs> I know that the thrips did get into the bag at some point and I did put a little bit of systemic into the water, not really knowing if that would um, work or not. I just kind of did it and it did. So that was great. Seems to have cleared up most of the thrip issue. However, um, I have been neglecting it. So it is like all of my others, um, just overgrown and a mess. And we're gonna save it today because um, it's a fancy little plant and I'm sad that I let it get messy. And I'm also going to obviously propagate and cut it and um, hopefully, it will be okay. I probably should just keep it in semi-hydro since it's been doing well, but. Uh, the, one of the other plants I have is also from um, that order from Kaylee, which was a wonderful, lovely surprise from her. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, I neglect things, but I keep them alive. You know, they get overgrown. I'm, I'm an overgrower. <laughs> I don't repot enough. That's my problem. Let's go with that. Okay, so I will probably, I don't know, cut this here and then um, hopefully I will be able to repot what I cut and then make like more of a pot of this. I actually might put this into some kind of a terrarium or something. I haven't really decided what's going on on this leaf here. Knock it off. I'm not really sure. What should I do with it? You guys tell me. You guys gave me good advice before, so tell me, what, what would you do if you had this uh, this plant here? Besides take better care of it than me. <laughs> so I have sprayed these so that they're not uh, fungal. So I'm actually pretty excited. I'm gonna go right in between these nodes here. Boop. Oh, scary. Just use a little twisty tie for now. Um, get a, have to get a fancier pole for this little friend here. So I am looking forward to the winter. Um, that won't last, <laughs> doesn't always last, but um, for now I am looking forward to it because um, it will give me some more time to work on my house plants because I have this beautiful collection. I have managed to keep everything that I have right now. I presently have around 150 plants, give or take five to 10 that are like multi-potted species. You know, I didn't really count deep, deeply into that. 
Um, so around 150 plants. And at this point, I don't want to get rid of any more of them. Um, they all are plants that I like. I've already sort of parsed down everything that I'm willing to part with. And um, I just want to spend this winter really just babying my plants, getting them repotted. We're going to have some fun repots and I'm going to ask you guys to send me questions and things like that so I have something to talk about. Not that I struggle in that department. <laughs> but we're, we're just going to, we're going to, um, you know, fix my plants together. <laughs> So if you're wondering, um, if you did watch my last repot where I um, took plants out of semi-hydro, most of them were imports as well. Um, if you're wondering how they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Like some of them, need, they really need to be like propagated and cut. So they survived the, the move to soil, which is great. None of them look to be, you know, dying. They did like drop some leaves. Some of them could use a different pot. Um, but I would say that so far it's been mission success. I haven't lost anything. So that makes me a little less nervous to do this one. Um, no, I know what I'm doing. I just have to like remember that. <laughs> this root is bananas though. So I'm also going to add some systemic to this soil as well because we are not about to lose this to thrips after all that effort I made to keep it from getting attacked during the great invasion. So again, a lot of these repots are kind of just stopping the bleeding right now as we go into winter. And most of these will be under artificial light, so they should have no problem. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure all of them are. Come January, things get complicated because then I need my big grow light over here for seed starting, and then it becomes a competition again. So we're just gonna water over the bucket again. And we're gonna let that guy sit. So now I've got this little friend here um, to propagate. It's actually already this really juicy little root right here. And that came from being inside the bag where it had humidity. So I can probably just take that, you know, from there up. So I will do a little bit of snipping here. And then we will also have this portion here. Okay, so last up, we've got another one from that um, Rare Plant Shop surprise box, and this is a beautiful Syngonium. I do not know how to say the name, um, so if somebody wants to phonetically spell it for me, that would be amazing. Get some of the little dead leaves off. This too has been a bit neglected. Um, it has had really good light. And it's never dried out, but it definitely has been nutrient neglected. Um, so I'm excited to get it out of the semi-hydro and put it, on the, put it on the regular schedule with the rest of my plants. So this is a really cool, and as I understand, pretty rare, at least in houseplant collections, um, Syngonium. And it is a non-vining compact variety. I'm not sure if Kaylee still sells it or not. I probably should have asked her questions before I filmed this, but you know what? Um, I decided what I was filming right before I sat down. So, <laughs> But it does get these beautiful, like minty leaves on it. It's looking a little bit greeny right now. I think it might be getting too much light. I have it under my very bright um, grow light and the silvery leaves tend to be underneath the top canopy so that's telling me it's probably getting a little bit too much light so i'm going to move it um, after i take it out of here but this one is another one that's just it grows really well it's taken a lot of abuse from me oh roots on this look kind of bad Ew, okay i'm sorry plant that's very expensive so it's actually pretty easy to separate this into two plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I can probably break this one off too. Oop, yep. There we go, there's another plant. So I gave um, these little guys a quick spray with some copper spray. So this isn't gonna help if it's bacterial, but if it's anything else that's fungal, that should help. Um, that's another thing I'm not sure you can get out of the US. Um, they just let us get tumors and stuff here. It's, it's fine. Freedom. 
Okay, so I've got a little bit of rooting powder here, and this is what that looks like. Um, so I'm just going to be using more of these um, kind of heavy-duty little pots. I think these are... What, what size are these? You know, why does it just say what size the stupid pot is on the bottom? I don't understand that at all. Oh my god, it feels it feels so good to get this done. Like I just look at these plants every day and just feel guilt that <laughs> they're not repotted and doing better. I have to clean the pot, obviously, but there's one sticker in here. And I will put this one in a small pot too, just for now. Well, it gets used to being in soil and grows some more roots. So here's our little guy. A little bit of root rot right there. Pull that off. This one's probably got the sadder of the root systems, but we'll see how it goes. At least we're increasing my odds that somebody will do okay. So anyway, I was just looking this plant up and it still fetches a couple hundred bucks apparently. Um, so it must still be somewhat difficult to get, um, you know, hands on. But uh, now hopefully I will own several if they are not dying of some kind of spot disease. <laughs> and then while I wrap up this video and say goodbye, I am just gonna be cutting all the dead begonia off of this uh, little begonia here. This is the uh, Leopon. This was uh, formerly beautiful, and I have found that whenever I neglect it enough for it to die, aka take it out of the fish bubble that it used to live in, um, it dies back like this, and I just take the dead parts off and I put the fish bubble back onto it, like so, and, um, and then it's happy because it does not have to share any oxygen with um, any disgusting humans. That's what we're gonna do to bring this one back from the dead. And then together, friends, we have resurrected a good half dozen plants here. And um, hopefully they will all do well. And I will give you an update on that um, as soon as things start either taking or dying. <laughs> There's like one tiny little part of this begonia left, but I'll take it, that's all I need. Oh yeah, she's coming back. This is the ultimate zombie plant. Begonias are great. You can, you know, people have a hard time with them. They die back easy, but they also come back. They also come back. Here's what's left of the root ball. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a repot after all. This begonia is still very quite literally in the shape of the, the pot that it was in before I got it. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna refresh this soil a little bit. So anyway, as we say goodbye today, um, I'll just let you know what I've got planned coming up. That doesn't mean it will all get done in the same order, but this is what I've got planned. I'm giving you another houseplant tour. I have not done that in a very, very, very long time, and um, this is not exactly the optimal time to be doing it as we go into fall, but I'm going to try to do it before um, too many of the plants start, you know, drooping from the lack of... Um, 12 hours of bright daylight. So I'm also going to be showing you how I get my house ready for the fall and we can kind of tackle that monster project together if you have to rearrange because of your heater or bringing plants back inside or whatever we can we can go through it together. Um, and I give you permission to put it off until I get around to that video which means I actually have to do the video. I won't leave you hanging. This is like the ultimate lazy repot right here, is just kind of refreshing the soil. This thing is for some reason just in a peat clump and I am afraid to break it apart too, too much, but I am going to try to crunch it and press it a little bit from the sides to loosen it up without breaking too many roots because this thing is definitely in a fragile state right now. So we're just gonna tuck it into some nice new soil Give it a good water and pop the bubble on it once it's a little bit dry. I don't want to put the bubble on right after I water. Just give it time for some of that surface to evaporate a little bit and then you won't run the risk of having mold accumulate so quickly. 
Okay, so we have repotted some pretty cool plants today. I hope I got to show you at least one plant maybe you don't see every day on plant tube. And um, I feel a lot better about getting a lot of these out of their very woeful conditions. So I'm gonna go find them some um, little cash cups and pots and things and clean up the pots and put them under some lights. And then I'm gonna go get ready for a Halloween party. So I hope you guys have an amazing Halloween weekend. Thank you for hanging out with me. I know this video was a little rambly. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy Halloween.